wanted to start with you first. You brought such a remarkable sense of naturalism and honesty to this character, making it really easy for audiences to connect with TJ. As an actor, how did you immerse yourself in his shoes and navigate the range of emotions that he experiences throughout this road trip? Um, I think a lot of just relying on my amazing scene partners and uh, and in preparation, I, I it's a lot of it's just a lot of daydreaming and yeah just imagining trying to make every moment uh as real as possible for myself before just trying to let go and play with Chris and and uh let him lead me or Catherine or yeah Chris, in addition to the incredible work that you've done as an actor, you're also a musician. How much do you lean on that part of your craft when preparing for a role like Jake, who's, who's also in such a pivotal time in his life, coming to his own? And if you had to select a song off your project, Hunting Season, that describes Jake's journey in the film, which would it be and why? Wow, what a cool question <laughs> you just asked. Um... I would say a song off the project would probably be Miss Calls because Jake's known for just missing a call and like he's like that I'm not picking up so Miss Calls. The car itself feels like a character with so many interesting parallels that you can make between TJ's relationship with his father. What was that preparation like learning the intricacies of that vehicle? How did that inform your portrayal of TJ? Do you have any favorite fun stories regarding it? Wow that's interesting. Well, I mean, obviously the struggle with maintaining the car or just keeping it on the road, you know, yeah. this boat of a thing is, you know, it's like uh, TJ trying to staying on course and and, and going towards uh, this on this journey that he set out for himself and, and not being deterred. Learned about the car. Well, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of it was it was you know, had holes in the roof and we had to seal that up. And there was a lot of things, a patchwork behind the scenes. And we had this amazing um, Evan Amaral, who is actually, uh, Billy Amaral was the scene partner of Paul Guilfoyle in the mechanic workshop scenes. And he's the actual mechanic who worked on and maintained the car. And his son, Evan, came along with us. And uh it was him who like maintained this this thing and kept it moving across the country uh and that a lot of that stuff fell on him and he you know i don't think we broke down like a, i think we maybe broke down one time and he got it right back up and running on the on the trip across the country it's pretty amazing so mm -hmm. that's all uh that's all evan yeah were there also little notes in the car about how to operate it Wait, yeah. I, why, wait, how do you know that? Because I know that. <laughs> that's so, wait, that's so true. No, Finn, there was. Yeah. There was little, little, like, things that would say. Yeah. You should ask Chris about driving the thing, though. <laughs> that was an interesting. Experience. Yeah, Chris, do you want to add anything? Um, about, about what? Sorry, driving just, the car. Just a car, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm like, besides the fact that I hit like a mailbox or two, um <laughs> cool things about the car we had the cassettes we had like a huge box of cassettes that i think they put didn't they put in the music system in the in the car they like rigged one up for us i don't yeah. think it worked i don't think it worked um the gas scene in the movie where we're like trying to find the gas tank yeah i think that was real because we were like we don't know how to do this um, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. a bit of a mystery box that car like, exactly i think it, i'd never operate anything that worked like that, like the pumping of the thing to start it. And... Chris, Chris Williams, <laughs> you also Whatever shot you... this this film in, in a couple of weeks, which is such an incredible feat. When you're working in such a limited time, how does that influence and elevate the performance that you're able to deliver? That's a good question. I would say I knew that we were going to be moving really quickly. And so I had to do like a lot of preparation. Um, but then it would be hard to prepare because the movie was full of so many moving parts. And so we'd kind of get like some scenes this, the day of, or like we'd have rewrites because like we just had to make the mm. story make sense a little more. And so sometimes we'd have to be like really on our toes and Finn and I would be like outside the back of the hotel, like, dude, what scene are we doing? What <laughs> lines? Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, but ultimately, yeah, we kind of, we kind of figured that out. And once you tackled the bees for like, I would say a week, I was like, oh, we got this. 
let's go anywhere on the globe and we can film this movie. Uh-huh. Also, I feel, mm-hmm. I feel like me and Finn had it easy. We kind of just like had to memorize our lines. Like people yeah. had to rig the car and like make sure that really expensive camera didn't like get stolen or fall yeah. off. We had it easy. <laughs> and you know, that, that brotherhood between the two of you is so believable on screen. And not only the ways that your characters show up for one another, but they also hold each other accountable. How are you able to build that bond and trust between each other so quickly? Uh, yeah, we played a lot of pool. Uh, yeah, we had a few days before shooting and, and Chris showed up. And I think we just kind of, we just kind of hit it off. And there was a sense very quickly, oh, this isn't going to be the problem of the movie for us like mm. our connection which was a big relief because there was a, a whole lot of other problems you know <laughs> so uh that was nice and it's it's it was really lucky honestly to get such cool people we got really lucky with the people involved and the crew because you're not just like making a movie you're also on a road trip with yeah. all these people yeah, so yeah. you want a good group and it's such a you know it, it's a big asked to make a movie all the locations like 13 states i think we went through and so that for everyone to be really flexible and easygoing and positive was very important and uh that was the vibe which was awesome yeah yeah i love uh, the map that's on the the film's website about the journey that you all took that you actually took yeah (laughs) Throughout the film, we meet these cast of characters who hold space for one another unconditionally. I just think it's such a big takeaway for anybody that goes and sees this film. For the two of you, who have been the people in your own life who've held space for you in a similar way? Hmm. Hmm. It's a good question. Mine mine is like a really cheesy answer. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Finn. I'm going to say Finn is held space for me in a lot of the ways that they're friends in the movie. I think like, well, Finn moved to New York after the movie and we got like really close and I like visited him in LA and I had like seen literally the most of the world I'd ever traveled with like a friend in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Um, With Finn, I would say, yeah, Finn, you were so nice to me. And I was like new coming in and like entering your home and like, talking with your parents and like being like crazy 19 year old Chris Sumter and you just held a lot of space for me. So you're my answer for that, buddy. Oh man, that's so sweet. I, I, I'm i not, not to just piggyback, but honestly, I would <laughs> say you two just, uh, I feel like Chris is really deep and I, we've had so many like, I mean, we spent so much time in an RV just talking to each other and like so many deep long conversations and uh got me to you know discover things about myself that I wouldn't have otherwise thought about and uh and yeah we've had a lot of yeah a lot of uh yeah space I guess to to help me discover who I am too and Mm. uh I think that's a big part of our relationship so Beautifully said. And also a perfect segue to this next question for you, Finn. But, you know, on this road trip, TJ makes so many discoveries about himself and his relationships. With this being the first time that you've led a feature film, what discoveries did you make about your own craft on this journey that you've now been able to bring to future projects? Yeah, I think I... Yeah, it's it's interesting. I remember starting, I've always, you know, I went to... I went to CalArts, I studied acting for four years, and then I was in an Uta Hagen class and uh, a studio in LA and always been trying to like figure out this thing that is acting. And I think getting to really experience, like experience it every day and like, no matter what you're feeling or, Oh, I like, don't know if I've reached the thing on this moment or I don't, and you're, you're just doing it. And in the end, it's just about like trusting the people you're with and playing, playing off of them. And, and it, and it not being about you and your like process or anything. It's just mm. in the end, it's like, okay, there you are. And we're, I'm, we're doing this together. And, uh, and I think I also learned like, oh, I can handle this. Like this thing I've always wanted that I've never actually done, you know, it was really cool to, to do it and feel, you know, generally comfortable in that spot and, and feel like, okay, cool. I, I have an appetite for this. I, I'm, I finished it and I just wanted to do do more of it. So that that was a 
that was great for me. That rawness, I think, between the two of you is what's been resonating with audiences. And I know Chris, this is Kaysen's directorial debut. And I believe he also has experience in front of the camera. How different is it working with an actor director? What was that collaboration like? Are we talking about Jason? Is Jason yeah. an actor director? Mm-hmm. Was Jason an actor? Where did well, I knew he did? <laughs> I think we he's been hiding from like, everybody. <laughs> That he's done like he was a model he was like yeah. I know, was he a gymnast i, I don't yeah, know he was like a gymnast uh, <laughs> a, a bodybuilder what hasn't jason done like yeah oh yeah, yeah. so i don't even think we worked with like an actor director i think we worked <laughs> with a jack of all trades like yeah. jason's just like good at everything i didn't know that but i guess that makes sense because jason was really nice like just caring about me as an actor first. I remember when we got to Texas one day, I was freaking out because I forgot to get a meal for lunch. Mm-hmm. And he just knew how important it was for me to have DoorDash that day. <laughs> he just knew how important it was. And so he was like, no, 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 the actor needs to be good. <laughs> Film this three line scene. And I was like, oh, this is a really good guy. He he cares about the actor. So I guess that's, that's how that could come into play. Mm-hmm. I think one of the beautiful things about independent filmmaking is that you're all able to take more risks. I think if you brought this initial idea to a studio where you have a cast and crew literally embarking on a road trip across the country, they would have immediately turned it down. For each of you, what is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as a storyteller? And when you look back at this experience, what was your favorite behind the scenes moment? Mm. Mm. I think... uh... Yeah, freedom, more freedom, less constraints, less, uh, yeah, definitely didn't feel like a leering presence over our shoulder uh, while doing it. Again, I don't have a lot of experience, so that is kind of my experience of movie making, which uh, maybe I'm spoiled in that sense. Uh, but yeah, that was the feeling that, you know, and sometimes that bites in it because you're like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And then, oh, we kind of lost the thread here and we're behind schedule and, you know, mm-hmm. but... I would say the freedom was was great. And what what was the second part of that? <laughs> just f- f- favorite behind the scenes moment from this journey. Oh, uh, I mean, just, honestly, just hanging out in the RV with Chris and with Catherine, and yeah, it was just really fun. And like, I mean, I feel like in some ways we were in this, you know, however long the shoot was, just talk conversation that would get interrupted by shooting. And it was really, like a really cool experience. And uh, that was my favorite thing, just just hanging out in the RV and, and talking. How about for you, Chris? Um, I think, oh, definitely one difference I noticed with filming like an independent, I felt like everyone was more patient and that's that's kind of a unique answer, but I think sets can get really chaotic quite easily. Um, and though we had a lot of like, things to tackle and it kind of sometimes got a mess I think that worked out for us because everyone ended up being like patient with everyone else doing their job and like having it 99% there and so I think everyone kind of extends this like leeway and that goes from like giving them extra time to set up a shot or like being okay if you get your lines like late or like helping wardrobe make sure that the continuity is right Or like, if I go wander off to the skate park, they're not going to like kill me. They're going to be like, Chris, we're going to film this. And like, and so there's just like way more uh, patience involved. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I I don't really have one. I literally is just being in the RV with Finn and like talking about random things. Mm